was two. Day to come on a 
We just started. I don't want to freak you out too much. But on the outside of this building, you can see six different shades of gradients, blue and green glass, which is a really great metaphor for how Genie Gang is actually kind of shattering glass ceilings in a lot of ways. Because the St. Regis is the third tallest building in Chicago after Sears Willis Tower and after Trump Tower. However, this right here is the tallest building in the world designed by a female-led architecture firm. Yeah! Give her a round of applause. We're very proud of Jeannie Gang. She's kind of a hometown hero in that way. There's even more cool stuff to learn about the St. Regis, but we're gonna come back to it at the end of the tour. We need a little bit more context before we get into it. But for now, stay on the left and look at this building with a super reflect reflective, almost silvery blue glass on the outside. It almost looks like it's jutting towards us. This is Swiss Hotel. And as we float on by the front, you'll be able to see exactly what shape it's built in. It's built in the shape of a giant triangle. Swiss Hotel was designed by architect Harry Weiss in the 1980s, and Harry Weiss loved them. triangles. He thought they mimicked the shape of the sail on his beloved sailboat, and he actually tried to incorporate triangles in almost every single one of his designs. We'll see another one of the buildings in just a few minutes when we head up on the north branch of the river. It's always really easy for me to remember the name of Swiss Hotel. It's a big, shiny triangle. It looks like a huge, beautiful bar of Swiss Toboro chocolate. Yum, 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 yum. Don't tell Harry Reese I said that. Now, off to the right-hand side, you'll see this yellow, onion-shaped dome coming into view on top of the Intercontinental Hotel. Now, I like to think that that onion-shaped dome is paying homage to the sticky onions of Chicago's history, but it was actually built to be a Zeppelin or a balloon more, kind of the predecessor to the helicopter landing pad. However, after the Hindenburg disaster, the popularity of blimps and Zeppelins fell dramatically. Pardon my pun, so it was never actually used in that way. It was turned into a viewing platform for just a few years. Now, unfortunately, that whole structure on top of the Intercontinental Hotel is closed to the public, but you can still enjoy it. If you're hanging out in downtown Chicago at night, look up. Keep your eyes peeled for that onion-shaped dome, because you'll see it illuminated in all sorts of beautiful different colors, changes throughout the year for different holidays as well. Makes for a gorgeous late spring evening. Cheaply and as cheaply as possible. 
The Rayleigh Valley was built in two parts, the left-hand side in 1921, and the right-hand side was completed in 1924. On the outside, there are over 250,000 uber-delicate terracotta tiles that to this day still have to be cleaned by hand. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty thankless task, but that's why this is my job.
This is one of five distinct rooms of the Chicago Riverwalk. 1.3 miles open public recreational space. Anyone can come down here and hang out. There are restaurants, entertainment, places to go kayaking and fishing. And the idea for the Riverwalk was proposed to Chicago in the year 1909. It actually took over a hundred years to finally know this. And when they did, it cost a hundred so while you're in town and the weather's going to be beautiful, but please come hang out on the river walk. How about you open it in the ice work? Next up, we're about to cross underneath the double-decker Wells Street Branch, just in front of the boat. And sometimes, depending on the timing of our tour, we'll be able to see the L train go by on that top platform. But if for any reason we don't see it now, we'll definitely see it at some other point on the tour. But the train in Chicago is referred to as the L because a lot of the platforms are elevated up on the ground. Makes it super easy to get around. It's really inexpensive. 250 per ride, free train yeah, service. Wall Street Bridge, yeah. though, great oh, example of a classic Chicago style bridge. It lifts from the middle where those two red lights are. That was a beautiful detail. It's a really Although this one is actually an exact replica of the 91 year old bridge that it replaced about 11 years ago. So hopefully, we get another 91 years of use out of it. On the right hand side, we're looking at the Art Deco Bebeef that is the merchandise mart. Art Deco style architecture is characterized by deep inset windows, long vertical lines, repeating geometric patterns, and metal finishings on the outside. Art Deco actually started here in America in the late 1920s, and this was a time of decadent excess and wealth. Really wanted to show it off, and that's why the buildings are so humongous. We've even got this row of giant Pez dispenser heads on the outside. Oh, There's no candy involved. They are busts of the titans of industry of Chicago's history, including figures like Montgomery Ward and Marshall Field, the department store king. And there's a lot more to learn about the merchandise farm, but we're moving right along. We'll come back to this one later on, too. We'll get an even better view of it from a different angle. But for now, we're crossing into an area of the river called Wolf Point. And Wolf Point is where all three branches of the Chicago River converge. They meet in the middle. Now, we're going to make a right-hand turn toward the North Branch for a few minutes. But first, let's meet this celebrity directly to our left. This is the new Veen building, contextual style architecture. That curve along the front matches the curve of the river just below it. This one was completed in 1983, and you might recognize it from the 1985 classic Chicago film, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. This is a building where Ferris's dad worked. And sometimes I like to wave just to see if Mr. Bueller will wave back at me, but uh, lately, I've been feeling like he doesn't work there anymore. Has been a couple of years, so I mean, can't really blame him. More contextual style architecture just directly in front of the boat. River Point with its parabolic arches cut out of the top and the bottom. The arch along the bottom allows for the Metra and Amtrak train lines underneath this building to run unhindered. It also works as sort of like a storm drain to divert any rain that might be falling in front of an angled portion of the building. But I'm going to be honest with you, I like it for a much more basic reason. Doesn't it look like a giant hot pocket? <laughs> right? I knew I wasn't the only hungry person on the boat. Oh, um, speaking of hungry, I can guarantee you that every building we've seen so far and every building we're going to see after this next one has been 100% vegetarian and vegan. But that is not the case for Fulton House, this red brick square building just directly in front of the boat. Now, Fulton House is one of the oldest buildings that we have on the river. It was built in the late 1890s to be the cold storage facility for a meat processing company. So this whole building worked basically like a giant freezer. Now that company closed in the early 70s, and there were three nice and actually surprisingly affordable apartments on the inside. Yeah, that's right But before they could turn this building into apartments, they had to wait three whole months 
just for this building to defrost. It was basically a giant block of ice. And when they went inside to do the renovations, they found four foot thick walls stuffed full of horse hair and cork that was being used as insulation to help keep the building cold. So I'm definitely not vegetarian, but don't worry. We're gonna hop back on our healthy regimen. We're about to cross underneath the Carroll Street Railroad Bridge. That's this bridge in front of us. It is always stored in the upper condition. It's been decommissioned since 1999, but it still does work. It's got this massive concrete countermate on the end that helps it work like a giant seesaw. And I've been told it only goes up and down once, maybe twice a year. Um, I've actually never seen that happen. Mostly I see it be used as a place for all the cool River North teenagers to hang out and smoke their cigarettes. Not that I'm condoning that behavior. Um, on the left-hand side, just past Fulton House, you'll see the triangularly shaped River Cottages. Hmm. Well, he's still just learned about a guy who loved triangles. He's still got one the to Harry Weiss he also designed the river cottages. Again, those triangles to mimic the shape of the sail on a sailboat and more nautical inspiration with the round, almost portal windows built in. I love the river cottages. They've got this great kind of almost bohemian look to them, even though the price certainly is not. In fact, the one second from the right sold about two years ago for $2.25 million. I don't know. There's a fair amount of us on the boat right now. If we all pull our money together, I bet we could actually get a really nice doorknob instead of one of those apartments. On the right hand side, this blue warehouse shaped building, this is the East Bank Club, sort of high end luxury health club and workout center. And this is actually the back side of the East Bank Club that we're looking at. It's reminiscent. So this is the back side of the, of the East Bay Club we're looking at right now. And we'll see some even older buildings on our tour tonight. Well, we're on the North Branch, and Captain is actually going to turn the boat around. And that way we can head down the South Branch, see what's going on down there. I'm going to hop off the mic real quick, kind of wander around to see if anyone has any questions so far. Great chance for you to get a drink at the bar or to use any of the restrooms on board. And then we'll be back on our red carpet cruise in just a few short minutes. Thank you. Is it a little bit of a side to side? Is it a little bit of a side to side? Is it a little bit of a side to side? Is it a little bit of a side to
three, but let's focus on the first one. If you were to go all the way up to the very tip-toppiest floors of 150 North Riverside, you would find gigantic tanks of water, about 160,000 gallons of water inside these tanks. And they're calibrated in a way that when the building sways in the wind, the water in the tanks sloshes in the opposite direction and kind of swallows or dampens the inertia caused by that swaying building. And that's why these tanks of water are called inertial slosh. What about the other two ways that architects counteract drift later on in the tour? But also, if you look up at those angled walls, it's usually a pretty good place to take a selfie because you get a good reflection of the boat out there. So if you're looking up at 150 North Riverside and you see somebody wearing your clothes, don't freak out. It's probably just your reflection. No guarantees at all.
this white box building on the right, Gateway oh, Center, know, just building, is a great example of international style. It's a softening up, a transition away from black box modernism. So it still does have a lot of similar features, simple lines, sharp right angles. This one's white instead of black, and it's really meant to be sort of tight I don't want to bang with it. Generic. You can find the style of building anywhere in your world. Or the house they So when you look over your own home town, take a look at the international style buildings. I can almost guarantee you, you will see some. Then, in the middle, that's what the Chicago Fire. I'll set the scene for you. 
and a fire breaks out in the barn of Mrs. Catherine O'Leary. She was an Irish Catholic immigrant who lived in this area, and she actually didn't live very far from where we are right now, only about two blocks off in that direction, off the right hand side of the road. And we fell for a fact that the fire started in her barn. And there's one kind of big prevailing theory about how it started, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But you might be wondering, well, Stephanie, Shouldn't the river serve as a natural barrier for that fire? But that night, there were 30 mile per hour winds whipping around the city. It picked up that fire, carried it across the river, almost like a fire tornado. And it certainly didn't help that the river at the time was only about four feet deep and filled with a ton of very flammable garbage. Now that fire caught on to all the wood buildings that were here before and ended up burning for three days. When that fire was finally contained, 17,500 destroyed. 300 people had died, 100 had been displaced from their homes. And this was a great tragedy. The city was angry and they really wanted someone to blame. And they decided to blame of all people, or rather, of all creatures, Mrs. Catherine O'Leary's cow. Yeah, they really want to be able to think that this cow had purposely kicked over that land because it wanted to burn down the city of Chicago. It's a little ridiculous. But you know, I'll, at the same time, I grew up around cows and I have known some pretty vindictive cows, okay? They can be really mean. They got big teeth, ugly feet. Also, not unlike most of my ex-boyfriends, but this was the worst thing to ever happen to Chicago. In a way, though, it was also kind of nice. Because what's more attractive to a group of up-and-coming architects than an entire city that has to be completely rebuilt from the ground up? And it's at this moment that architects from all over the country come here to Chicago. They want to test out their new ideas, their new technology, and this is actually when the so this thing is coming out. Is Park is Lincoln Park. It's one and a half times the size of Central Park in New York City. There's a ton of fun stuff to do out there, including the always free Lincoln Park Zoo. But this is just a very, very, very brief overview of some of the history of Chicago. The fire destroyed, the fair reanimated, and the plan beautified. How are we doing out there? Are we having fun so far? Yeah, we are. <laughs> now off to the right hand side, this building is called a River City, and if this one looks familiar to you, it might be Gertrude Goldberg, and that's the same guy who did the twin corn cob shaped towers of Marina City that we saw earlier on in the tour. Frankly, I find it pretty embarrassing when two celebrities show up to the red carpet wearing the same outfit. It's fine. Don't forgive them. And I'm going to make it work, too. Same sort of concept here. Apartments up at the top and a place to park your yacht down at the bottom. Just beyond it is the Reed, R-E-E-D, brand spanking new. In fact, so new, it's not even finished being built yet. When this is completed, it will be another luxury residential building. This is one of actually many new projects that are planned for this area of the river. In fact, in about 10 years, this whole south branch is going to look completely different than it does now. A lot more residential buildings, a few more public parks as well. So please, come back to Chicago in about 10 years, if not sooner. I'll come and take my tour again, and we can see together how it's changed. When you are watching a red carpet event, who are some of the figures you might see? You might see actors, 
singers, athletes, maybe even a member of the royal family. And I bet you didn't know, we actually have our own royal family here in Chicago. And they're here with us right now, and I want to introduce you. But first, I need to know that you're ready to meet them. So, thank you for being here today. Yeah, that's pretty good. Some of us are more ready than others, but that's fine. All right, we're going to meet them directly in front of the boat. This black box building with the two white antennas on top that is the king of the Chicago skyline, Willis Tower. Now, some of you might know this building is Sears Tower. We'll talk about why that might be in just a second. Directly in front is the Queen, 311 South Wacker with her crown of barrels up at the very top. And off to the right-hand side is the Diva Princess, the Art Deco style Chicago Board of Trade with that 30-foot tall statue of a woman on top. Let's talk about her first. She's a diva. She demands her attention. Art Deco, so once again, she's got those deep inset windows and long beautiful lights. The statue on top is of the Roman goddess Ceres. She's the goddess of rain and agriculture, and she's on this building because they originally treated agriculture features there. Now that statue is also done in an Art Deco style, so it's really streamlined, kind of futuristic looking. It actually looks a lot like the Oscar yeah. statue, which is a pretty good statue to there. refer to. Okay. And Ceres is, where do we get the word, cereal, Me. and cerveza, which my friend Frank is still serving at the bar, at the back of the boat, if you haven't said hi to him yet. All right, my friends, let's meet the queen. 311 South Walker with her crown of barrels all the way up at the top. Now, those barrels were actually illuminated at night with a combination of 2,000 fluorescent. Those lights are so bright that they actually have to be dimmed during bird migration season because otherwise, birds will mistake this building for the moon and they get all discombobulated. It actually throws them on their flight. It is Siesta or it is Chicago Mode is up to the tallest building. Kaluka. Kaluka. Up to the tallest building. Chicago Mode. And USA Mode is up to the tallest building. USA Mode is up to the tallest building. Second. USA Mode is second. First building is up to the tallest building. Just Trump and opposite. It takes Trump and opposite. It's a good thing. 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 It's